While we've mapped everywhere there is to map on land, there's still vast areas of ocean that remain untouched and unexplored. What lurks in the depths of the deep dark seas still remains a mystery. So for today's video, I'm counting down 15 of the most mysterious places in the ocean. Number 15, the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle. Few places on Earth can boast quite as many unexplained disappearances and unsolved mysteries. But what is it really? Well, from a geological standpoint, it's an area in the North Atlantic Ocean, and it's a pretty loosely defined region. The tips of the triangle are basically Miami, Florida, Bermuda, and San Juan, Puerto Rico. This triangle covers an area of approximately half a million to one and a half million square miles, because like I said, the area isn't really defined. So it's just a big, widely undefined region in the ocean? Well, not quite. You see, stuff goes missing in the Bermuda Triangle, so numerous ships and planes have disappeared without any explanation. No distress signals sent, no wreckage found. Well, now the area is prone to violent weather too, including hurricanes, and that could account for some of the disappearances. There's also really strong currents here too, like the Gulf Stream, which can make it hard for ships to navigate at times. However, the weather and the currents do little to assuage the beliefs of conspiracy theorists. To many, it's not the weather nor the currents that are to blame. Nope, it's aliens or time warps or doors to another dimension. You see, some believe that the aliens have, for some reason, situated themselves in this region, and they occasionally just swipe the odd boat right off the water or a random plane from the sky. Others speculate that the Bermuda Triangle could contain portals to other dimensions or time warps and that the missing ships and planes simply slip through one. Of course, none of these theories have been proven and none of the odd disappearances have been explained, so the Bermuda Triangle still remains one of the most mysterious places not just in the ocean, but in the world. Number 14. The Great Blue Hole What could be more mysterious than a massive blue hole in the middle of the ocean? Well, that's basically what the Great Blue Hole is. It's a massive underwater sinkhole located off the coast of Belize. The hole's about 43 miles from the mainland, and it's actually part of the larger Belize Barrier Reef System, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So what makes it so mysterious? Well, it's perfectly circular, and it has a deep blue color that sharply contrasts with the turquoise waters that surround the reef. The hole's about 984 feet across and about 400 feet deep. The sinkhole was formed during the last ice age when sea levels were much lower. It's believed to be a collapsed limestone cave system. At least, that's the leading theory. Truth be told, its actual formation is source of debate in the scientific community, and no one really knows for sure how it was formed. It is a captivating place, full of intrigue. In fact, the Great Blue Hole has earned a reputation as one of the world's most mysterious diving sites. Divers flock to the Great Blue Hole to explore the wonders for it themselves. It's got an eerie beauty about it, plus it's in a pretty remote locale, which only adds to this intrigue. Now, the hole may seem to have had a bottomless depth, but this place is ripe with marine life. Fish, sharks, coral, you name it, they all live in there. But the real allure is the world of underwater caves. Exploring the hole is not for novice divers. It requires advanced skills and technical equipment, and getting there is no cup of tea either. You have to get permits from the Belize authorities, coordinate transportation and accommodation, and you have to check the weather before heading out. But if you're lucky enough to do so, then you can say you dove in one of the most mysterious places in the ocean. If those aren't bragging rights, I don't know what is. Number 13, Bimini Road. Not so much a place as an object, or an object in a place. Bimini Road is one of the most mysterious objects ever found in the ocean. It's also known as the Bimini Wall or Bimini Rocks. It's an intriguing underwater rock formation off the coast of Bimini in the Bahamas. Now, this road's made up of a series of limestone blocks that are arranged in a near-linear formation. Now, the reason it's so mysterious is it really resembles an ancient paved road or pathway of some sort. The road's located in the shallow waters near North Bimini Island, and to add a little punch to the road, it's in there with the Bermuda Triangle. So given that theorists have, of course, jumped on the road and its location and claimed that Bimini Road is obviously the road to the lost city of Atlantis, it's now not proven, of course, but there are several things about the road that are pretty mysterious. The limestone blocks that are arranged in such a precision and regularity that people argue they must be man-made. They're too perfect to be natural, they say. However, the most captivating theory that connects Bimini Road to the legendary lost city of Atlantis comes from Plato's dialogues Timaeus and Critias. 
there, Atlantis is described as an advanced society that existed over 9,000 years ago before sinking into the sea. That's pretty much where the theory that Bimini Road is a remnant of this fabled city comes from. Of course, there's also a lot of theories that the rocks are perfectly natural, but that theory isn't as much fun. In any case, Bimini Road and what it actually is continues to be a pretty controversial topic, with a lot of people sitting firmly on either sides of the fence. Number 12. The Weddell Sea A sea itself might not seem like the most mysterious thing around, but the Weddell Sea is not your ordinary sea. This sea is a vast expanse of water located in the Southern Ocean. It extends into the Southern Hemisphere and surrounds Antarctica's eastern side. And yes, because of its location, the sea is characterized by its extensive ice cover. In fact, the sea ice is present for most of the year, as well as large ice shelves and icebergs. The Weddell Sea is in one of the most remote and inhospitable regions on Earth. It's notorious for the harsh weather conditions and very cold temperatures. These things, combined with a thick layer of ice, make it almost impossible to explore. And since it really can't be explored, it really hasn't been studied. The sea is an integral part of the Antarctic ecosystem. Marine biologists know that much, but most of the marine life is poorly understood since scientists can't really access them. It's not that exploring the sea is hard or expensive, it's just downright dangerous. Unpredictable weather and high winds are the norm out there on that sea, and because the sea is really isolated, it takes a lot just to get there. And to make matters worse, nearby Antarctica doesn't really offer much help. There's limited infrastructure there, so scientists basically have to travel to a remote continent with little on it, and then out to an even more remote sea? Well, this is what makes it so mysterious. We really don't know a lot about this ice-locked location. Logistically, we're trying to find out more is a nightmare. So what really lurks beneath the sheets of ice in the Weddell Sea? Well, we really don't know. Number 11, Point Nemo. This next mysterious place in the ocean, with the same name as the adorable little fish who got lost and had to be found, kind of has a similar story. Point Nemo is one of the most remote locations on Earth, so finding it really isn't for the faint of heart. And if the fact that that doesn't tip you off to how remote this area actually is, then its other name will. Point Nemo is also known as the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility. It's so remote, it is pretty much inaccessible. It's located in the South Pacific Ocean, and it has the rare honor of being the farthest point away from any landmass in the world. The nearest landmass is 1,670 miles away. Well, you can take your pick, since there are three landmasses that are similar distances, Ducey Island to the north, Mar Island to Antarctica in the south, and Motu Nui of the Easter Island to the northwest. So, Point Nemo is the place in the ocean that is the furthest away from land, surrounded by miles and miles of open ocean in all directions. Due to the remote location, Point Nemo is often called the loneliest place on Earth. Just to put this into perspective, the closest human inhabitants to Point Nemo are the astronauts on the International Space Station. The water here is over 13,000 feet deep, and because it's way out there in the middle of nowhere, the water hasn't really been explored. Most of the ocean floor under Point Nemo hasn't been mapped. So basically, it is one of the very last unexplored places on the planet. And since it's so far away from any land, it's probably safe to say that Point Nemo won't be explored anytime soon, which begs the question, what will we find when we finally find a way to explore Point Nemo? because finding Point Nemo is as hard as finding one specific little lost fish in the ocean. Number 10. The Gakel Ridge The Gakel Ridge is a mid-ocean ridge that's located beneath the Arctic Ocean. It extends from Greenland to Siberia, so it's pretty big. In fact, the Gakel Ridge is part of the global mid-ocean ridge system, which is the longest mountain range on Earth. However, even though it holds those bragging rights, it's still one of the least explored places on the planet because it's really remote and it's covered in ice. The ridge stretches 1,100 miles along the seafloor of the Arctic Ocean, and it lies at depths ranging from 9,800 to 18,000 feet. It's got some pretty rugged terrain, with steep valleys and really high ridges, but what makes it so mysterious is its inhospitableness. The ridge is located in one of the most inhospitable regions on the planet. It's really cold there and the region's covered by thick ice, so it makes it pretty hard to explore it and not much is known about it. There are active hydrothermal vents there that were discovered along the ridge in 2001, and that's pretty important because these vents emit superheated, mineral-rich water. Now, this water can support unique ecosystems and life, so scientists are pretty confident there's plenty of life down there in that ridge. 
The organisms derive energy from chemicals in the vent fluids as opposed to sunlight, and it's helped scientists better understand life in extreme environments. So although we don't know everything that's living down there on the ridge, we do know something is, and whatever lies down there could possibly help us better understand how things could live on other planets. In fact, each exploration mission uncovers new species, a species that's adapted to those harsh conditions. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this Gekel Ridge. We just don't know exactly what it is… yet. Number 9. The Greenland Coral Reef all right, let's get one thing straight. Coral reefs are pretty cool. With their vibrant colors and otherworldly structures, there's a reason divers flock to these things. But not all coral reefs are easily accessible. The Greenland Coral Reef in the North Atlantic Ocean. It lies within the very cold but very nutrient-rich waters of the Greenlandic continental shelf. So it's not exactly a hot spot for hobby scuba divers. Now, unlike the tropical coral reefs found in warmer waters, the Greenland coral reef is a cold water system. It thrives in frigid waters. Its depths also range from about 980 to 2,900 feet, so yeah, it's pretty deep. The reef is mostly made up of a species of stony coral, and it provides a lovely little habitat for a wide range of marine life. Marine life that's been hanging around long before our discovery of the reef. One of the reasons the reef is so mysterious is we didn't even discover it until 2012, and it was discovered by scientists from the Greenland Institute of Natural Resources and the University of Copenhagen. So of course, due to its recent discovery as well as its challenging location, much of the reef is still unexplored. Cold water corals grow much slower than their tropical counterparts, so the green coral reef is really vulnerable to environmental change. If we want to learn more about it, we have to make sure we don't destroy it first or alter it too much. Luckily, the location and the temperature make it pretty costly and logistically hard to explore, so we're not likely to cause the reef too much damage, since we can't send swarms of scientists down there to collect stuff. Number 8. The Horizon Deep in the Tonga Trench Welcome to the second deepest oceanic trench in the world, the Tonga Trench. And within it is the deepest part of the trench known as the Horizon Deep. Now, this is located in the South Pacific Ocean to the east of the Tonga Islands and extends from the Kermadec Islands in the north to the Louisville Seamount chain in the south. Horizon Deep is the second known deepest point on Earth. So, how deep am I talking? Well, roughly 35,702 feet. Yeah, and as you might have guessed, because the trench is so deep, it's really hard to explore. In fact, Horizon Deep remains one of the least explored parts of the ocean, which is a shame because the Abyssal Zone is home to some really unique, highly adapted organisms. They've learned how to survive under immense pressure as well as complete darkness, and we haven't, which is why it's really hard for us to explore there. With specialized equipment, though, and some remotely operated vehicles and autonomous systems, we've been able to explore parts of it. The equipment is pretty expensive, though, and sometimes the equipment gets damaged during the mission, such as the case with the HROV Nereus. The Nereus conducted groundbreaking missions down to the horizon deep and actually captured some high-resolution images from down there. Sadly, though, it was lost during a subsequent mission, which goes to show how hard it actually is to explore down there. Marine biologists are pretty confident that there's some undiscovered species in the trench, and if we can discover them, we can learn a lot about how to survive and adapt in those areas. It's just a matter of figuring out a way to get to the bottom of the world's second deepest point. For now, it remains one of the most mysterious environments on Earth. Perhaps that will change in the future, though. Moving on to number 7, Lake Vostok. Lake Vostok is hidden beneath the East Antarctic Ice Sheet near the Russian Vostok Station. It's one of Antarctica's largest known subglacial lakes. This lake is encased beneath more than 3,700 meters of ice, and as such is pretty much inaccessible. But because it's inaccessible, Lake Vostok has a preserved, pristine, and ancient environment that fascinates scientists. The mystery surrounding Lake Vostok heightened in the late 20th century when Russian scientists successfully drilled through the ice sheet to reach the lake's surface. Ice cores extracted from this drilling revealed a record of climate and environmental changes of the past. The extreme conditions of the lake, like perpetual darkness, high pressure, and sub-zero temps, have sparked curiosity about what might be down there. Perhaps there's a unique microbial life form down there, and if so, discovering these organisms could provide clues about life's limits on Earth, as well as the potential existence on other planets. They haven't found a lot yet, but what they found is millions of years old, and this is important because scientists could draw parallels between the findings in Lake Vostok and life in similar extreme conditions elsewhere in our solar system. 
Given the fact that the lake's under a thick layer of ice and its remoteness, exploration is pretty tough. Plus, there's the risk of contamination. So as it stands, whatever's in that lake is still pretty mysterious. Number 6. The Black Sea's Underwater River Beneath the Black Sea, there's a river. Yeah, that's right, there's a river under the sea. Also known as the Black Sea Bosphorus Strait, or the Black Sea Cascading Current, this river flows beneath the surface of the Black Sea. Now, the Black Sea itself is a small sea that's bounded by Europe, Anatolia, and the Caucasus. Now, unlike typical, ordinary rivers that flow on the surface, the Black Sea Underwater River flows along the seabed. It starts or originates from the Bosphorus Strait, and then travels into the depths of the Black Sea. How does this happen? Well, it has to do with salt. The underwater river has a dense saline water, and because the density of the water can be affected by many things like temperature, the river actually has distinct layers. It flows because of the currents, and this salty current that flows along the seabed displaces the less dense fresh water. And you better believe this underwater river's got some pretty hefty impact on the surrounding ecosystem, or at least marine biologists think it does. For example, it might serve as a migration path for a certain species of fish. It might also carry nutrients with it and disperse them to areas that wouldn't otherwise have those nutrients. However, it's important to point out that these are mites, since not a lot is known about this underwater river. The seabed here is a treacherous place with steep slopes, deep canyons, and high ridges, so pretty tough to navigate. Plus, since the river's at the bottom of the sea, it's hard to access. And because of this, the exact origin and evolution of this underwater river aren't really known or fully understood. More research is needed to uncover the mysteries of this odd and rare underwater river. Number 5. Twilight Zone Reefs in the Chagos Islands The Twilight Zone Reefs aren't actually named after the sci-fi TV series, although they do have a science fiction element to them. Twilight Zone Reefs, also known as Mesophotic Coral Ecosystems, are located around the Chagos Archipelago in the Indian Ocean. These reefs are found at depths between 100 to about 500 feet, and that's important because it's their depth that they're named after. They sit below the range of conventional shallow water coral reefs, but above the dark ocean floor. Now, this depth range is known as the Twilight Zone. This zone is characterized by low light conditions. Now, those conditions significantly influence the types of coral that can thrive there, as well as the marine life. However, because the coral reefs are in this twilight zone, it's difficult to study them with run-of-the-mill traditional scuba gear. They're just too deep, so instead, the reefs are often explored using submersibles. These ecosystems are different than the ecosystems of their shallow water counterparts. For example, there are species that have adapted to the low light and cooler temperatures, species you won't find in shallower reefs. They might have wacky things like elongated polyps or a flatter structure to help capture more light and to help soak in that light. A lot of the organisms have these unique pigmentations so they can better absorb the limited light available. The Twilight Zone reefs continue to be studied, but today they're a lesser-known region with some equally lesser-known marine life. So who knows what other mysterious things are waiting for us as we enter the Twilight Zone. Number 4. The Milky Sea Just the name alone of this next entry conjures up images of space and beyond. But rest assured, the Milky Sea phenomenon is where its name suggests, in the sea. The Indian Ocean, to be more exact, the Milky Sea phenomenon, it's a very rare and mysterious oceanic event. Large areas of the sea light up. This light can be blue or white, and it's in the northwestern Indian Ocean, near the maritime regions of Southeast Asia. Not to be confused with your typical bioluminescence, which only happens in small patches, these lights of the Milky Sea can illuminate massive areas. The glowing effect can last for several hours to several days, and as such, it's been known to provide a light source that passing ships can see. So what causes the sea to light up? Well, that's where the mystery is. The exact cause of it remains somewhat mysterious, although some believe it could be caused by bioluminescent bacteria. Now, those bacteria emit light through a chemical reaction with a fancy scientific name, luciferase-mediated bioluminescence. Basically, the bioluminescence bacteria respond to changes in the ocean's conditions. And because they gather in massive numbers in the Milky Sea, the light is visible over huge areas. The phenomenon, though, is very rare and even more unpredictable, so it's hard for scientists to study it. In any case, the lights from the Milky Sea have been reported for centuries, with the earliest recorded observation coming from Captain John J. Hurd in 1854. So the Milky Sea and its milky glow are not new, but they're still elusive and enigmatic. Number 3. The Sargasso Sea 
if the Sargasso Sea had a hashtag, it would be hashtag Sea of Currents. Why? Well, because this area is swimming with them. The Sargasso Sea is a region of the North Atlantic Ocean, and instead of being bounded by land, it's bounded by four ocean currents. These currents form a clockwise circulation pattern. In the west, we have the Gulf Stream. To the north, there's the North Atlantic Current. To the east is the Canary Current. And to the south is the North Atlantic Equatorial Current. This makes the sea unique and mysterious, since its borders aren't defined by boring old land masses. The sea is named for the seagrass that floats along the surface, sargassum seaweed. Because of the currents, the seaweed forms large floating mats. This seaweed isn't just for show. Under the layers of seaweed, myths and legends abound. One of the most enduring legends here is that of a ghost ship. Mariners are reported sightings of derelict vessels drifting amongst the seaweed. But their decks were empty and their sails were tattered. These ghost ships are often said to be crewed by the spirits of sailors that were lost at sea. Some people have also made connections between the Sargasso Sea and the lost city of Atlantis. Some theorists propose that the remnants of this ancient civilization lie beneath the calm waters of the sea. Since there's so much seaweed on the surface, these theorists claim that the ruins of the lost city might be hiding under the weeds. Early sailors fear of being trapped in its windless waters. It is a phenomenon known as becalmed. Ships that are becalmed can be stranded for weeks. It's an eerie thought being trapped in an unending tranquil expanse without any hope of escape. These tales paint the sea to be both a place of beauty and of peril, and add to the overall mystery of this strange, seaweed-ridden sea. Number 2. The Devil's Sea, or the Dragon's Triangle We've already covered the Bermuda Triangle, but did you know it has a sister? The Devil's Sea. It's a region in the Pacific Ocean that forms, you guessed it, a triangle. The Devil's Sea is located off the coast of Japan, and it stretches from the eastern coast of the Philippines to the islands of Guam and Yap. The points of the triangle are Guam, Taiwan, and Japan. And just like its more famous counterpart, the Devil's Sea is an area shrouded in mystery and myth, and it's been that way for centuries. It's also known as the Dragon's Triangle, depending on who you ask, and has lost many a ship and aircraft. And just like the Bermuda Triangle, these disappearances happened under some pretty mysterious circumstances. It has always been a hazardous place. Strong ocean currents, unpredictable weather patterns, and some seismic activity thrown in for good measure make this region a navigator's nightmare. These things could also be reasons why ships and aircraft go missing. However, like the Bermuda Triangle, things have gone missing without distress signals or any kind of wreckage. There's also tales of magnetic anomalies, electronic malfunctions, and unusual weather in the region, all of which fuel more conspiracy theories. The sea is situated within the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is an area known for a lot of seismic activity, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and the like, plus underwater tectonic activity are all the norm out there in the Devil's Triangle. These volatile things could, of course, offer up some explanations for missing ships. Furthermore, the Devil's Sea has some complex currents, shallow shoals, and submerged hazards. However, it's also entirely possible that sea dragons are lurking beneath the water and eating passing by ships, or that aliens are beaming up ships to take back to their home planets for scientific study. Well, at least they're possible until proven otherwise. And since the Devil's Triangle is in such a remote and tumultuous part of the ocean, no one's really rushing out there to explore it. Things like oceanographic surveys, seismic monitoring, and historical research have all been conducted to uncover the truth. So what was the result of all these expeditions? They were inconclusive, of course, which is why aliens, ghosts, and sea dragons are still on the table. In any case, it does seem strange that the world has not one, but two mysterious triangles in the ocean, and they both have some pretty similar stuff happening in there. Stuff that doesn't seem to have any other plausible explanations. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you to our channel members.